is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice like a bride adorned with her jewels. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You're very welcome to Mass today on the feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. That means that she was preserved free from original sin, from the first moment of her conception in the womb of Saint Anne, her mother. And Joachim, of course, was her father. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and the of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God, Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you take You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling place for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so, through her intercession, we too may be tense and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The word of 
sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He went in and he said to her, Rejoice so highly favoured. The Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favour. Listen. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son. She whom people call barren is now in her sixth month. Nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception teaches that Mary, the mother of Christ, was conceived without sin and her conception thereby was immaculate. Now, Mary's sinless conception is the reason why Catholics call Mary full of grace. So every time we say the Hail Mary, Hail Mary full of grace, actually referring to her 
Immaculate Conception, today's feast. William Wordsworth, the poet, he was a devotee of Mary, believe it or not. He referred to her as, and this was before the doctrine was proclaimed in the church in 1854, he said that she was our tainted nature's solitary boast. And that surely refers to the Immaculate Conception. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is celebrated by Catholics on December the 8th each year. That's exactly nine months before her birthday, of course, which is the 8th of September. Many people confuse the Immaculate Conception, and maybe you do as well, um, with the Virgin Birth. It's nothing to do with the Virgin Birth of Jesus. They believe that Mary gave birth to Jesus while remaining a virgin. That's, we also believe that, but that's not today's feast. They are not the same thing. A less common mistake is to think that the Immaculate Conception means that Mary was not conceived in the ordinary way. Of course she was. In fact, Mary had ordinary human parents just like you and me and their names were Joachim and Anne who conceived Mary in the ordinary way the way we were conceived Mary received God's grace from the first moment of our existence and she was totally and completely redeemed by this grace because she was redeemed, Mary spent the whole of her existence in perfect relationship with God. God, why did God do this? Well, he did this basically so that Mary would be the worthy mother of God. So it would be inconceivable if Mary was tainted with original sin like we all are and then be at the mother of God at the same time. That wouldn't sound right. So God in his goodness preserved her from that sin, which we suffer from, and is passed down through propagation. It's not a personal sin, but because of original sin, we're suffering from things like the pandemic. If we didn't have original sin, you can forget about that. We suffer from death as well. We suffer from sickness. All these things are the residue of original sin, which is denied today by so many people. They think science can overcome everything. Mary received this redeeming grace, not because of any merits of her own. She was a very humble woman. She didn't know what it was all about. She actually said, the Lord has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Not because of any merits of her own then, but because God freely gave her the gift of his love. St. John Paul II had a great devotion to Mary. And the motto of his ministry, of his pontificate was, totus tuus. And he was referring there to Mary. That was written on these big banners, have you noticed? taught us to us and he got those words from Saint Louis de Montfort who um, was one of the greatest saints ever in reference to Mary and this is what he said John Paul II the grace of Christ the Redeemer acted in her in anticipation preserving her from original sin and from any contagion of guilt he said that in 2003. However, this is an ancient teaching. It wasn't just proclaimed in the middle of the 19th century. Well, it was proclaimed exactly one year after the Vincentians came to here to this parish. They came in 1853. Pope Pius IX, Pio Nono, as it's called, he proclaimed this in 1854. 
It's an ancient teaching, but it remains controversial to some Protestants because it is not explicitly referred to in the Bible. Early Protestant thinkers, however, were more devoted to Mary than some of their successors. Martin Luther, we could say he was the founder of Protestantism, couldn't we? Well, he, for example, he was a firm believer in the Immaculate Conception. And this is what he said in one of his sermons. From the first moment she began to live, she was free from all sin. So there you are, even at the earliest stages of Protestantism, he still believed in the Immaculate Conception. And in 2005, a report by the Anglican and the Catholic theologians, they found common ground for this belief when it stated that in view of her vocation to be mother of the Holy One, we can affirm together that Christ's redeeming work reached back in Mary to the depths of her being and to her earliest beginnings. So things in that area are beginning to change. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception was proclaimed as infallible by Pope Pius IX in the bull. The bull means official papal document and it was called in F. Abilis Deus in 1854. And thus is an important article of faith for Catholics. And this is exactly what it says. And this was the pivotal moment when it became an infallible document. We declare, that's Pope Pius IX, pronounce and define that the doctrine which holds that the Blessed Virgin Mary at the first moment of her conception by a singular privilege and grace of the omnipotent God in virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Savior of mankind, was preserved immaculate from all stain of original sin has been revealed by God and therefore should firmly and constantly be believed by all the faithful. Before proclaiming the doctrine, Pope Pius IX took steps to see whether the Church as a whole agreed by asking 603 bishops whether he should proclaim the Immaculate Conception or not. 546, that's 90%, of them said he should. A unanimous decision there. Bernadette, the visionary at Lourdes, in four years later, 1858, where Mary revealed herself as the Immaculate Conception, put the stamp of God's approval on the doctrine. Mary conceived without sin. church. May the Lord keep them close to his heart and bless them abundantly in their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
We pray for purity of heart and mind, that like Mary, we may always be available to God and fully open to his inspirations. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. On this day, let us remember all unborn children, especially those recently conceived. We pray that safety, protection and love would be granted to them, and that we, the Church, through the intercession of Our Lady, would, call, would take on the call to always uphold the value of unborn life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, we pray for oppressed and marginalised people everywhere who deserve a better share in this world's blessings. May Mary help them with her prayers and may God grant them justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. We pray for people who suffer and those who care for them that as Mary shared in her son's suffering as she stood at the foot of the cross, God may bless and comfort them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have died. May they follow Mary and all the saints into the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us join our prayers with the prayers of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, listen to the prayers today, and through the intercession of Mary, May they be answered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through our intercession we may be delivered from all our faults. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginnings of the church, his beautiful bride, without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away all our offences. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <coughs> Glorious things are spoken of you, O Mary, for from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our God.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which, in a singular way, you preserved the Blessed Virgin Mary in her immaculate conception. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have loudly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen.